Hi there, I'm Alex and welcome back to Ukes of Alex. This is the ukulele channel where we try and understand and absorb as much about ukulele and ukulele culture and just have some fun along the way. Um, please do check out other videos on the channel if this is your first time here and uh, yeah, I came to a natural end of some projects I've been working on and before I dive deeper into something that would take a really long time, I asked my, uh, my followers on Patreon what they would like to see from me and gave them the option of examining my current ukulele collection and uh, that seemed to be a really popular choice and a really low maintenance video that I could make for you now so uh, there's no fancy uh, camera cuts in this video or, uh, or trickery but I am going to talk to you about my tenor ukuleles because I primarily play tenor and I have four very interesting very different tenor ukuleles that I can show you and uh, these tenors span 90 years. You have a tenor that was made just a month ago, you have a tenor that was made probably around 1930, you have a 2017 Subikobo, and you have the Canalea Monaco tenor. So the first ukulele we're going to look at today is this Canalea Monaco tenor. Monaco is a, a Hawaiian word for mango, and mango trees had always been something that had interested me because they were not used often as tone woods, but in the four or five years that I had been really heavily researching top end ukuleles, I'd found some builders had kind of used mango as a secret weapon to produce an instrument that just looked fantastic, but also had the depth and kind of textured, uh, honest sound of color. And mango had always been the ugly duckling. Uh, going back 10 years plus, if you had a mango ukulele in a supplier's range, it was either a cheap laminate or it was the ukulele that people bought when the mahogany or the acacia one wasn't in stock, something like Pono. And it's gone the opposite way now. Mango is really revered as being one of the top tone woods and it's much more sustainable than koa. Mango trees have a lifespan of up to 120 years where, they're, where they are fruit bearing. And then that tree will you know, come to a natural end of its life cycle. And I just love the idea that we could make a ukulele out of something that would just fall to the ground and pass away. And I like to think, think of these instruments as living, breathing organisms, and I just like being part of the story. So I talked to my friend Carmana Souza at the NAM show about this uh, in 2020, just before the pandemic started, and we designed between us some of my favorite features because ultimately I wanted to own one of these ukuleles. So it has a slotted headstock, and I love the really sharp break angle of the neck. It gives these instruments a bit more poise and a bit more toughness like you have to play into them a bit more than you would uh, a normal paddle headstock ukulele it has a 38 mil nut and uh, a new bone nut and saddle with an ebony fingerboard and it has these side dots that are just off center made of mango the other ukuleles in the monaco range are a um they have a monaco inlay there mine has a special alex beds one that was my my friend's idea just to make mine a bit more special and unique to me and probably a running joke so that I couldn't sell it because I have a habit of selling things I love and then regretting it. Um, one thing I love about Canalea is they have these slightly thicker, deeper dimensions. The body is just a bit deeper and a bit bolder and a bit more Hawaiian, which I, I love about Canalea. And the UV gloss finish as well is just so even and clean. So you've got this lovely figured piece of wood and it's trapped just beautifully underneath the gloss. Um, you have a pin bridge on the Canaleas, which is something that I've always loved coming from the guitar world and the pin bridge in theory should increase sustain but I think most of the sustain from this ukulele comes from that slotted headstock which is at such a steep angle. And uh, yeah, the Canalea Monaco is my, my main ukulele to do my courses on. That's right, I do ukulele courses. You check them out at ukeswith.com. First one's launching the end of August 2021. And uh, if you're wondering about the strings, uh, all of these ukuleles today are strung with my Ukes with Alex strings that I have made by Rotasound in the UK. And um, yeah, I'm using them on all of these ukuleles because I'm boring, but also because I just love the strings. I'm really happy with them and... <laughs> I like to think that they do their talking for themselves. They don't need me to promote them so much. So anyway, yeah, that's the Canalea Monarch.
Second up, we're going to take a look at this Sumi Kobo 5A Koa Tenor. This is the most valuable instrument in my collection and I totally don't feel worthy of it. Anyone out there that has really nice expensive instruments and then thinks I really am not a good enough player to play these, like I feel that way too. Um, but it's about what you get from them and if you can afford them, you know, I look at this instrument probably about five days a month I find myself getting this instrument out. I would play it more but I have two young children and I'm just so, you know, petrified of it getting too damaged. But this ukulele travelled back with me from the NAM show in 2017 and it was one of the first truly high-end Japanese made instruments that I ever tried and held that wasn't a kawaii or something from a factory. Ichisumi has about 50 years of experience building high-end mandolins, guitars and ukuleles. He worked in the famous Japanese factories that produced um, many of the kind of really revered and really sought after uh, Japanese instruments from that time. And after moving away from that and becoming his own builder, many of his apprentices have gone on to be big names themselves. It's worth looking him up. The brand is Sumi Kobo, that's the builder. And due to his advanced age, he's not building in massive numbers anymore, which is probably part of the factor in the price of this instrument. But I can tell you now that you would find more of these 90-year-old Daviki ukuleles on the market in a year than you will an Ichisumi ukulele. But you can just see why it's so luxurious. It's 5A color. It's about as master grade as master grade gets. It has maple binding. Many of the others that are out there are actually different to this one. The other three or four that I've seen being made have all got abalone trim, whereas this one is all maple. And I actually like the maple trim more, so it's just fortuitous that that's the one I ended up with. And then you have this secure inlay going, the cherry blossom inlay, going up the fingerboard, telling a story before finding its climax. So if you imagine it's falling from the cherry blossom all the way down. And yeah, my words do not do this instrument justice. I've learned that the hard way. Um, finally, you have a planetary tuners. This is one of the first instruments I ever tried with the Goto planetary tuners on it. So he was an early adopter of that traditional style geared tuner. Yeah, so if you're only gonna own one high-end Koa ukulele, this is the kind of one that you want to own, isn't it? Okay, next up today we're going to take a look at this ukulele. This is a Daviki. Daviki ukuleles, oh god, I shouldn't get into all of that. I want to make a proper video on this instrument and I will, I'm doing as much research as I can. The only problem and the thing that's holding me up is that I believe all of the information out there currently is just slightly wrong, <laughs> but I can't, I can't actually find proof to say otherwise and I wouldn't want to make a video that kind of played hard and fast with the truth and uh, I wasn't there 90 years ago when this ukulele first surfaced and was sold out of Bournemouth England and uh, that's right this ukulele is the product of a music shop in Bournemouth England and the label inside says it's a style 4 but actually the inlays going up the fingerboard tell me that it's a style 3 and it's from a time in history where things are very interesting for the ukulele. 
So this ukulele was made somewhere between 1926 and 1931. I know this because it's a tenor ukulele, but the tenor ukulele was not invented until 1926. So if you went and Google 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 Google, Google, Google. if you went and Googled Daviki right now, you would find people advertising them for sale in past listings and auction houses saying for sale, and they would put crazy years that seemingly have no actual fact behind them, like 1917, 1911. But if the tenor ukulele wasn't invented until 1926, it's highly unlikely that the instrument was made anywhere earlier than say 1925. It could be that the tenor ukulele was not actually invented in Hawaii and it was invented somewhere in Europe. But I think actually if you look at the documentation from Martin Soprano ukuleles that were doing the rounds and travelling around the world at that point, this ukulele was actually marketed when it first was manufactured and sold as a Hawaiian mandolin. And the UK's kind of love affair with the ukulele during the 1920s and 30s you know, meant that this ukulele really kind of just found its own time period and home. And yeah, there's not really much information out there and certainly nobody to corroborate stories. Although Alda de Vicky, the man behind the music shop who had a shop on Stafford Road in Bournemouth, I will um, show you more about that when I make my video on it. He has living relatives who have actually been into Southern Ukulele Store and talked to us about uh, these ukuleles and the information I have um, and I believe to be true is that the inlays were done in the Netherlands there are lots of instruments from around the late 1920s where inlay work like this was done in in Holland and the instrument itself could well have been manufactured in um, in Germany if not the kind of Czech Czechoslovakia Germany area it's almost certainly a variation of a spruce top with some kind of birch back and sides. It's a one piece back, but a kind of possibly a veneer. So it could be like a solid top with a veneer over the top. And you have white um, binding that is not plastic. It's like an early kind of Bakelite material. And the neck itself is a V-neck. So a very unique feeling ukulele. Has a slotted headstock with that Daviki logo on. The original tuners, which are these really gnarly looking open back tuners, open back, um, open gear tuners with a kind of plate to keep them on. You have a 35-ish mil nut width, it's kind of a fast and loose <laughs> nut width. And then you have a pin bridge. And I love that this ukulele uh, is based on the very, very early Nunes um, and the early fathers of the ukulele designs so it's very true to the earliest periods and that's as much as I can tell you now before I have done my research. I have this one strung low G some people might be thinking he is crazy stringing a 90 year old ukulele low G but I found more and more when I do my research that people were using these kind of strings in the like really thick gut strings to get a linear tuned instrument at that time. So that's how I do it and that's how I like it. And that's all good. I have the original case. I'll show you that in the video about this ukulele, but for now, I'm gonna just give you a quick tune on this. Finally today, the last ukulele we're going to talk about was manufactured in July 2021. It's about as far removed as we can get at the time of filming from the uh, Daviki. And this is a Big Island Uli tenor. I have really liked Big Island ukuleles since I started working at Southern Ukulele Store. In 2010-2011ish, Big Island were kind of the Flight and Snail and Enya and all of those brands pitching their ukuleles at around three to 500 pounds. 
Big Island were that brand. They were partially made in Vietnam and then they were assembled in Hawaii and the final finishing would happen in Hawaii. That's the early story of Big Island and they were started by a really cool guy called Jorma Winkler who later started Aimua ukuleles. He's a wood merchant so the wood in Big Island ukuleles has always been true Hawaiian woods and even though they're made in Vietnam they're made in a factory that have a history of making some other fantastic ukuleles so um, think Romero Creations, uh, the other ukuleles that are retailing around £1,000 plus price point. And um, we have been at Southern Ukulele Store where I work, we have been the kind of UK, um, I want to say wholesaler, but it's the wrong word. We're like the bringer inner of Big Island from, um, from Vietnam. So we're bringing them in and then we're sharing that brand with World of Ukes and selling them in quite small numbers, but we are able to have more control over what's being made. And I said to them, please, 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 can you do uh, a stained ukulele, like a model that they had made previously in a concert size? I said, is there any reason you can't do this with a normal top? And they loved the idea. And the Uli Tenors, the first batch of three arrived and they were all just chef's kiss. They were all amazing and I love them. And this is mine. So this is a cedar top. I'm not sure of the provenance of the cedar, but it's a nice straight grain cedar top with this really cool green stained mango back and sides. Now the mango is listed as Hawaiian mango, but what I like about this ukulele compared to the Monaco is that the mango grain patterns are completely different. This is very wavy, this is very green <laughs> and very straight and everything about this ukulele is just direct. Um, I've been playing some gigs with it for the last uh, three weeks since receiving it and um, despite this ukulele being the cheapest ukulele in my collection and still a premium ukulele but retailing between seven and eight hundred pounds this ukulele to me competes with the very best of them and um, I absolutely love it it has a 35 mil nut with a rosewood fingerboard and bridge and I love the Honu headstock hope you do too and the closed back tuners with the snakewood buttons. So there you have it folks, that's my tenor ukulele collection. I really, really hope you liked it. Remember I have a Patreon and you can join and go back and get tabs and all sorts of information from previous videos on this channel. Please check out the other videos on the channel. I've done tutorials and podcasts and reviews and all sorts of things. Um, and I would be very, very grateful if you can check out ukeswith.com where I'm just about to launch my first ukulele course and I have another two or three lined up to launch by uh, the end of the year, if not kind of early 2022. Um, I'm Alex. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.